Hey everybody, Sean here from Shooty School. In Pro Tools, we're gonna find Easy Drama 3, we're gonna load Easy Drama 3, and then we're gonna see how Pro Tools can support Easy Drama 3 with some of its features and workflows. Let's rock. So when you launch Pro Tools, Pro Tools automatically scans for new plugins every single time. You can watch the little text at the bottom of the Pro Tools loading screen, and it's loading plugins, it's loading my waves right now, and so on and so forth. So as long as you installed Easy Drama 3 correctly, Pro Tools is going to find it. Now, if that's not the case, I would go find some official Avid support or ask at an Avid community to help you out. I'll link to a few down below. Now, when you finally have a session up, here's how you load Easy Drama 3. You can go to Track up here in the menu and select New. This is where you can create an instrument track. I'll cancel that. Let's speed up life. Let's on PC hold control shift N to get that dialog, which is command shift N on Mac. And now we have the new tracks dialog. You simply type a number of how many tracks you want. One is how many want. We want a stereo track because easy drummer or tune track software is stereo. And we don't want an audio track. We want an instrument track. And then I might just select the name field and put Easy Drummer 3 so I don't have to do it later. Now let's speed up this workflow. What can speed up the process is holding Control on PC or Command on Mac and you hit the left and right arrows. That's how I can choose how many channels I want to work with. You see this field, stereo. Now it's mono. Now it's all the other routing options for whatever your setup is. So when I select Control Shift N to get this new tracks field, I hold Control Right to select a stereo track, and then I hold Control and hit up and down to find the instrument track, like that. Then I name it. So those are key commands that really speed your life up if you're constantly making new tracks, which I am on a regular basis. To load Easy Drummer 3, you want to go into the Insert. Now, if you don't see insert, you can go over to this tiny little column looking icon and select it and make sure insert is checked. Once those are checked, you'll see the column here. You select it. By default, we want a multi-channel plugin because Easy Drummer is two channels. It's left and right, just like the headphones you wear and just like the speakers in your room, for most of us anyway. And then it's split up into categories, Easy Drummer, and a lot of your virtual instruments are in the instrument sub menu. And here's Easy Drummer 3, and I would just click on that. But let me show you a preference that I really like. I probably found this out like 10 or so years ago. I was doing it this whole way, the majority of my Pro Tools life. But if you go to Setup, which is Preferences on Mac, and then you go to Preferences, and if we look right under Display, Organize plugin menu by category. That's what it's set up now to. But I like to do manufacturer or I like to do category and manufacturer is actually my preference. Watch what happens if I select this. I'll hit OK. Now, when I add an insert, a plugin on my instrument check, I'll go to multi channel. Here's those categories. But now it's really divided up into all the different manufacturers that I have bought plugins from. So now there's finally a tune track subdirectory. And now it's really easy to pick my favorite tune track plugin out of the crowd. So now I just select Easy Drummer 3. And now Easy Drummer 3 is here. So at this point, you don't even have to watch anymore if you're a beginner. At this point, you are ready to use Easy Drama 3 in Pro Tools. Right now, you're all set and you're ready to rock. If you want to stick around and poke around Pro Tools with me for a minute, maybe you can learn a couple extra things. First off, if you're using a MIDI controller, I have a finger pad and a keyboard right on my desk. You might have a drum kit like I do as well. If you're playing it and it's not working, well, first thing you should do is record and able Easy Drummer 3, the instrument channel of Easy Drummer 3, because that will now accept incoming signals. I was just tapping on my finger pad. Now, if you still can't hear your MIDI controller, 
Here's a field that's really important. I actually already have it showing. By default, it might not be. So there's actually an instrument column you might want here. So you click on this column icon again, and you go to instrument. In this first field right here, it says all, which is like a catch all, which kind of means it should be working by default. But here's where you select particular MIDI controllers and even which channels they broadcast on. So if I select this and I go to predefined, Here's every MIDI device or input I have that's coming into my computer. I have my X Jam pad that I'm clicking on. It's right here. And if I had a more sophisticated workflow, maybe that MIDI controller is only broadcasting on channel seven. So I would go down to it and I would select channel seven. Why would you want to do that? Well, because you might have multiple plugins going and you might have multiple MIDI controllers and they'll all trigger each other. It gets messy real quick. So that's why it gets that sophisticated. OK, when you launch that instrument column, you have some panning and you have some volume just like you could get on the mixer screen over here. Now we can solo and mute Easy Drummer. I'm going to disable the record button because I'm not actually recording right now. And we can add effects as long as it's after the Easy Drummer instance. If you add effects before Easy Drummer, well, this is where the sounds are actually coming from, so that's not going to work. But let's just say I want to put my favorite EQ on there. And I just want to, you know, brighten up those hi-hats a little bit. And maybe that kick drum is just beating up my bass just a little too much, you know? So that's just a uh, rough example of maybe I want to treat it with some EQ or throw a compressor on there. You would put all your effects after the plugin here, which I was a little sloppy. Maybe this Easy Drummer 3 instance should be up here. So I'll just click it and I'll drop it up there. Sometimes that takes a second because it's going to reload the plugin, but it won't reset the settings. So don't worry about that. How do we get that Easy Drummer interface back? Well, you just click on it right here. This is where the plugin exists in your channel strip here. Let me make a song instantly. Now, most of this part is not for people who use the song track in Easy Drummer 3. I usually do the majority of the time, but there's great arguments whether you should or whether you shouldn't. So let's take this MIDI and bring it to the instrument track. I'll mute it here so I don't hear this MIDI trigger twice. Pro Tools will play this MIDI out of the channel and Easy Drummer 3 will play it out of the song track at the same time. So that's why I muted it here in the song track, hence these little tiny mute icons. That's just a reminder that we're muted. If I hit play in Easy Drummer 3, we won't hear anything. But now that I've dragged my entire song out to my instrument track in Pro Tools, we should hear this song. And we do, and Easy Drummer 3 is playing. Let's poke around just a little bit more. If you go under the title of your track where it says clips, this is like, hey man, what do you want to do in the track area? You want to see clips? Well, here's a clip right here. Do I want to see blocks? I don't, blocks aren't useful to me. There's no information there. But notes, this is cool. This puts the piano roll right in your track. You don't have to go over to the piano roll to access it. I can literally make edits right here. Can select these notes and move them around, for example. I'll undo that. But if you select notes, that will turn your channel lane into a MIDI grid editor right then and there. Velocities, great. Here's where we can access the velocity. So I don't even know what I just selected. It sounds like a cymbal and some kick drums, but we can adjust velocity here, okay? MIDI volume. This is like a master track. This is like a, this, here's where you can automate volume, right? So I just turned it up here. You can grab your pen tool and I'll put it on line. 
I just made a fader move volume increase here, right? So you can control volume. You can mute here if you just want to kill Easy Drummer for a second. You know, I can mute it here. Now it's muted. Now it's back. Now it's unmuted. I I haven't done automation like this in so long. I do a lot, most of my work in the Easy Drummer song track, but a lot of people prefer to do it here. You can pan, which doesn't make too much sense. It's a stereo instrument. And if we keep going down to controller, you can actually affect the hi-hat pedal information if you wish. So that's good for e-drummers. Also, this is going to take a second to find, but this is important. If your cymbal squelches aren't working on your e-kit, make sure mono after touch is selected. That's a frequently asked question. Everyone gets hung up on it. When we're not on notes or clips this is basically an editor you can automate moves or you can edit stuff it's absolutely fantastic so that's why this is important i'm going to put it back on clips because the clips is kind of where you organize and arrange your entire song as opposed to edit individual beats that's why clips the default and it's good that clips are the default now if you have a weaker computer and you want to get some processing power back after you've laid out your drum track and you, and you know you're finished with it or just not going to work on it for a while, you can hit the freeze button, which is this little snowflake. And that will take Easy Drummer and freeze it, which means render it to an audio track, and then it will turn Easy Drummer off so it's not sucking up computer resources anymore. And this track will only play a single stereo audio track. It's very handy. Just click this button. As you can see, it's a WAV file now and it plays back just as it would if the plugin was loaded up and active, except it takes less processing power. So it's, it's a great power tip. I'll undo that. Where I prefer to do my MIDI editing work instead of going to notes, because this is a definitely a pretty compact screen, is you can go to Window, MIDI Editor, to launch the MIDI Editor. But what's more convenient is with the hand tool, you can just double click a clip my whole song's one clip right now double click it and that will launch the grid editor and now we can use these tools to edit our beat just drag stuff around and what's cool is the midi editor i just broke the window out so we can actually see my regular view plus the midi editor on top of it you actually have a different set of tools it's the same set of tools but you can make different selections. These aren't connected, which is great. So I can be in grid mode up here and not in grid mode down here because I want to humanize something, for example, or vice versa. So these tools, though they're similar, they're independent from each other. It's really handy and it's great for, for piano roll editors. One thing I want to comment about before we leave is something that used to always trip me up. I'm going to hit Control Shift N. And I'll just do another instrument track. I'll just choose anything else I have on my computer. I'll pick something at random, something that won't take forever to load up. Let's say I'm using Easy Bass. Actually, this example is about the MIDI being in the instrument track. So there it is, and I'll mute it from here. Close Easy Bass. This is MIDI playing. Never heard the song before, by the way, just made it visually. But when we go over to the MIDI editor, what we're seeing is, oh, uh, it's alt wheel. Yep. Yeah. Alt mouse wheel zooms. Sorry, it's been a while since I've been in here. When you open up the MIDI editor, I'm seeing the bass and the drums combined. And if you don't realize that way, you might be moving drums around that you think is the bass or moving bass around that you think is the drums. And over here in this left panel, which you can reveal with this tiny little button over here, you can decide what MIDI is showing. And since both of these little gray dots are highlighted, that means both tracks are showing at the same time. So if I didn't want to see my bass MIDI because I want to edit drum MIDI, 
I'd hit that dot and now easy base is gone or vice versa. There we go. Here's the bass. Here's the drums. And lastly, before I go, I'm going to make sure I'm in grid mode and I'm on clips. I'm going to get my selection tool out. If you use your F buttons, F1 through F10, probably even more, it makes it much faster to select these buttons. I'm using my F buttons right now to make these selections. It's, these are great key commands to learn to edit quickly. So here's my selector tool. My grid is on. And this is how I would make quick selections. I would hit Control E or Command E on Mac to make a splice and cut this beat out. And now I can move this beat around. So that's how you can arrange your song quickly, just like that. Or use the scrub tool. You can str scrub stuff back and forth. Or well, better than that, if you hover above these three main tools, which are the ones you probably use the most, there's a little tiny bar up here. You can actually use these three tools at the same time, depending on how you hover over an object. So if I want to scrub, I just go over the very side of an object. If I want to select, I move over the middle of an object and click and drag. Now, if I go down, it's the hand tool, so I can grab something and move it. But if I move over an object and go up, now it's a selection tool and I can make a selection. So I hope that's enough to get you started in supporting Easy Drummer with Pro Tools, never mind loading it up as efficiently as possible. Comment below if you got something out of today's video. I have two free ToonTrack themed social and support groups on Facebook and Discord. If I've ever made your day, please consider contributing to me so I can make more content for you. I also have a members program for more exclusive content. Links to all that are down below. Rock on.